Hey coaches, Coach E here. In today's show, I'll be translating Wake Forest offense to eight man. If you've not seen my translated eight man videos, I look at a few plays from any college offense and reframe the plays to fit in an eight man offense. All right, today's topic will be Wake Forest offense from the 2021 regular season game against North Carolina. A little background on the Wake Forest quote unquote clawfence. The nickname of the offense comes from head coach Dave Clawson, but his offensive coordinator and play caller is Warren Ruggiero, who is in the picture here. He's been with them since 2009 when they were at Bowling Green. They came to Wake in 2014 and have really built a consistent bowl team ever since, finishing 11-3 and last year with losses only to other ACC teams, Clemson, Pittsburgh, and North Carolina. Offensively, Ruggiero and Clawson started using RPO stuff at Bowling Green, but now their entire system is RPO-based. For the most part, it's all they run. Probably the most interesting thing that catches most people's eyes is that long mesh period on all of their RPOs. All right, now let's take a look at Wake's plays and how they translate into eight man. Our first play is what I'm calling ace left Q power swing RPO. Ace for the one by one set. That's why I'm calling it an ace, all right? Wide outs on each side. So, like always, here I'll start with the play breakdown starting with the interior blockers from left to right, and then I'll work to the receivers and then backfield. So starting with the Y on the far left here, interior lineman, his job is to drive out that lefty end. All right, next, the left guard is angling right. He's going to help the center in the gap scheme. They're going to work on that nose and work up to next level. The left guard could potentially release to the right linebacker if possible. All right, finally, the right guard is the one who's going to pull lead the hole through the left B gap onto that left linebacker. So he's got the power uh, through the left B gap. Each of the split wideouts, the F and the X, are responsible for just staying in front of the DBs over top of them. All right, I didn't even draw the F up, but just know that, that he's responsible for that left corner. Now in the backfield, so the action here is quarterback B gap power to the left with the swing screen option to the tailback also, so making it kind of an RPO, more so – it could potentially more so be a pre-snap read if you already know what the defense is going to do. So let me explain here. So the right linebackers are read man simply because the linebacker is most likely responsible for covering the back out, especially eight man here in a 3-2 defense. So if the linebacker widens at all, the quarterback is going to keep it through that left B gap following the right guard. All right, and I'm leaving the right DN unaccounted for simply because over 90% of the time, the DN is just going to sit or hold this position when he's unblocked. All right, most defensive ends, in a 3-2 defense in eight-man, at least in Kansas here, are taught they have quarterback. Now, if the DN does become a problem and the defense doesn't read or follow guards, then instead of reading that linebacker, the adjustment is to read the DN. And if he widens, the quarterback's just going to follow that right guard. If he bites down inside for the quarterback, that's when the quarterback would throw the swing. So that's the adjustment here. But the original design of this play right now here is reading that linebacker if he follows the guard we're throwing it the swing to the running back if he follows the back we're going to take it up up the b gap left side hit it hard with the quarterback all right let's take a look at how wake forest ran this play okay so pre-snap wake forest is identifying numbers including the wing they have one-on-one -on -one with the corner and the receiver at the top of the screen you can barely see you got one-on-one -on -one with the nickel corner in the slot and the safety is one-on-one -on -one with the tight end who is a wing, all right? And so the post-snap read here is strong safety down to linebacker. So he already knows he's got one-on-one -on -one with the receivers, both receivers up top of the corners, and the, the wing on the strong safety, all right? So next, after post-snap, after he gets the snap, he's going to read that linebacker. If he blitzes or sits, then they're going to throw it out to the tailback. If the linebacker would fly out and covers to recover the run back, then the quarterback's going to take it up, up the middle. So let's watch this here. Okay, so you can see, watch his eyes again. So he he goes, he kind of goes down top to bottom there, reads the safety of the linebacker blitz. So it was an easy throw to the outside, three on three. And zero makes some nice moves uh, and picks up first down. Let's see it one more time. And see, in this case, in 11 man, they're running quarterback dart. So the tackle is actually going to pull and lead. But an eight-man, I had it as a guard because we don't have tackles, so. So there you go. All right, let's move on to the second play. Our next play is what I'm calling spread glance post RPO. 
All right, with all of our own linemen blocking head up, we'll start the play breakdown left to right with our routes on this one. Starting with the X, he's going to run the fin route or a five-yard in, getting vertical to five yards and breaking it in. Pretty self-explanatory, five-yard in route or fin. Next, the F is going to run the slot fade, trying to stay wide. He's also going to originally aim right at that left corner in hopes of potentially naturally rubbing into that left corner. Um, especially if the DBs are in man coverage. And then finally, we have our Y running the skinny post route anywhere from three to six yards on that glance pattern on the right side. All right, so with the inside zone action in the backfield now, the quarterback is going to read the right linebacker. If the linebacker steps up to help with the run, the quarterback's going to pull and throw the glance. And if he drops, if the linebacker drops or just sits, then he's going to hand it off to the tailback. Overall, this play would really work great against linebackers who read the backfield so the post-snap read is always the glance side linebacker on the inside zone, give or throw the glance. But pre-snap, I would still tell my quarterback to try to pick on what, or pick up on whether the DBs over my twins on this left side are in man or in zone, all right? Just to have that third option. If the linebacker does show a blitz and then he backs off, but your quarterback had already pulled, that way he has a third option in the progression rather than just giving up on the play. Now let's take a look at how Wake ran this play. So pre-snap, Wake is identifying the depth of that strong safety, right? Post-snap, they're going to read the strong safety. Again, if he drops down fast, he's going to throw the glance behind him. If he drops down slowly or moves slow or even just stays back, he's going to hand it off. All right, he dropped down slow, so he hands it off, and they pick up about three yards. All right, not a great play, but still picking up three yards. All right, let's see it one more time. So watch the strong safety right here. He creeps in real slow. So while they ride the mesh, he gives it off. Running back still picks up three yards. All right, one more time. Takes it in slow. Only gets three. Let's see another look at this. All right, again, here's the strong safety. Creeping down slow. There's the long mesh. He pulls because he comes all the way down. And he's got the guy on the glance post right over the middle there. Nice seven, eight yard gain for first down. One more time. Excuse me. 10 to 12 yard gain. It was a first and 10. One more time. There you go. He steps all the way down to help with the run. Pulls and throws. First down. All right. Moving on to our third play. Our third play is what I'm calling spread wing seam read RPO. On this play, all of our own linemen blocking head up again. And our F is running insert through that left A gap. The Y is running a three-step slant pattern back into a whip. And then the X is running the seam read. Now, the specific seam read route, though, can be ran several ways on this type of play. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to talk about the, this seam route against this defensive look here in eight minutes. So here, the DBs are shifted right in a cover two look with the right corner in a cloud flat, taking away any outside release by the X. So with all this in mind, the X is going to release inside with his fastest release, just getting down the field and getting vertical, basically just finding any open area down the field to the middle while the quarterback is going to read that strong safety. If the strong safety is slow off the snap or reads backfield and steps up at all, then the quarterback is going to look to pull and throw deep. All right. If the strong safety stays deep in his zone, quarterback just give it off to the tailback. He'll follow the F uh, to the left side. All right. So the post snap read again on this play is that strong safety on the seam read. But again, I would tell my quarterback, pre-snap though, still identify the depth of this left corner. If he's high and inside, don't be afraid to take the gift on the whip in that one-on-one -on -one situation on the left. All right, now let's take a look at how Wake ran this play. All right, Wake is pre-snap identifying the depth of the safeties. They do that a lot. They're reading the entire defense pre-snap, seeing where they're at. Post-snap, though, they're reading that strong safety. If he drops down fast, quarterback's going to pull and throw. If he moves slow or if he stays back, he's just going to hand it off, all right, because they got the numbers to the inside. It's a six-man box with a six-man line, including the Y. So they'll take their chances on the run if the safety stays off, all right? I also believe, though, the wide receiver here is just taught fastest release and has an option to run multiple routes. But with the corner and the cloud fly at the top, uh, letting him get to the inside, not letting him go outside. He sees the strong safety bite down hard on the run, so he keeps it up the seam, and you'll see what happens here. All right, so the strong safety 
right there on that long mesh. He steps up just enough, and the receiver sees that on the seam read, just takes it deep, wide open deep ball. You might be thinking on this, why would he step up? But go watch the full game online or on YouTube TV or ESPN Plus, and you'll see Wake Forest's long mesh is just extremely tough to prepare for, especially in only a week. Um, and so you'll uh, you'll understand why these safeties were confused because earlier in the game, they're gashing him on runs on the long mesh. And now he hesitates for a second and steps up and the wide receiver just burns him over the top as they pull it and throw it deep. So it's really tough play to cover. Um, and in this case, great read and decisions by all of Wake Forest, all around great execution. Um, but like I said, yeah, go watch the full game and you'll see uh, how difficult it really is uh, to prepare for this. Let's move on to our final play. Our final play is what I'm calling spread wing vertical dagger. All our own linemen, again, are blocking head up. This is just pass blocking. So we'll go left to right with routes, starting with the X. He's running a five-yard quick out route, all right? He's going to run the corner off, then break to the sideline. Next, the F is running the vertical, really trying to occupy that free safety in that corner, all right? Hopefully, you open up the deep middle of the field for the X, who is running that eight to 10-yard dig route, behind the linebackers, all right? So that's the full play. Progression is just left to right, all right? Pre-snap, read the left corner in a one-on-one -on -one quick out route, then move to the safety, post-snap, looking for the dig behind the linebackers, all right? Obviously, if the safety doesn't stay deep with the F on the vertical, then just throw it deep. But more than likely, the F is really just a clear out route um, and probably not going to be somebody you throw it to very often. But all right, let's take a look at how Wake ran this play. Okay, you can see there's only a three-man rush, so he had all day. This is third down, like 16 yards, and he gets the first down. Actually, I broke down this exact play on my dagger concept video, so go check that out, and you'll see it a little more in depth. But here's the route tree right here. You got the uh, inside guy running a crossing route. The guy on the far left is running a deep outside release route, and he just kind of breaks it off after he gets so far. Number five runs that outside release bender dig back to the middle. And with a three-man rush, like I said, the middle of the field is wide open behind these linebackers um, because they didn't get heat on them. And so there you go. One more time. Let's see it from the end zone. Cam. Right here. So there you go. You can see him come right into the middle of the field, wide open, easy first down. About an 18-yard gain on third down and 15. All right. Remember, guys, if you guys like any of these play concepts, be sure to experiment with it. Draw these up against the primary defenses you see and take a look at how it might fit within your offense. All right. But with that, I'm going to wrap up today's episode of Translating Wake Forest. Remember, I'm releasing videos every Tuesday night at 730. So if you want to see new videos right away, tune in Tuesday nights at 730. Also, if you have any questions for me, comment your questions on any of my videos. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Might use them in a future video. If you enjoyed this video or if you took anything away from the video, please click and subscribe and check out some of my previous videos right here. And like always, thanks for watching.